China is the world's top semiconductor consumer, and now it's accelerating efforts to become self-sufficient. Last year, $47 billion in investment was raised as part of the so-called Big Fund, which aims to bolster the semiconductor industry and reduce reliance on other nations. Well, the value of China's chip industry was more than $180 million in 2024, and experts say that will reach close to $300 million by 2030. But one stumbling block for China has been this, extreme ultraviolet lithography, or EUVs. The machines help to produce smaller, more powerful chips. Well, currently, there's only one supplier for chip production equipment, ASML, from the Netherlands, but it's been barred from selling its most advanced models to China under pressure from the United States. A breakthrough was made in China in March, domestic EUV system. It's been tested by Huawei and could come into production next year. Experts say it could be a game changer. Xiaomi's 3NM chip is also a significant milestone. It's just the fourth company globally to achieve this and the first from China. And Huawei has also developed an advanced AI chip, the new Ascend processor. It's most powerful yet, and it's seen as a true competitor to the U.S. giant NVIDIA. And talking of NVIDIA, well, its CEO says the U.S. curbs on chip exports that were meant to hurt China have actually hurt the U.S. more and instead accelerated Beijing's efforts to pursue greater domestic innovation. Back to you, Juliet. Thanks, Siobhan. Well, Rob Enderley is President and Principal Analyst of Enderley Group. Thanks for coming on the programme. Now, first of all, what do these tiny chips do that other chips can't? Well, basically, they're, as you pointed out, they're really small. They're very power efficient and very powerful. Um, this new uh, Xiaomi chip is in line with the best from Qualcomm and recognize that they weren't even on the roadmap a couple years back. So that's a massive move in terms of competitive, competitiveness over a very short period of time. And this launch from Xiaomi, I mean, how much of a big deal is it, not just for the company, but for China and for the rest of the world? Well, it showcases that China's moving very quickly, far more quickly than the rest of the world is moving, largely as a result of being forced to do so because of the tariffs and blocks on, on U.S. technology going to China and China technology coming out to the West. Um, that has driven China to over-execute, if you can use that as a term, and the, and the end result is across a number, and, and your coverage covered a lot of this, uh, across a number of areas yeah. from automotive to computers. China's not only coming up to parity, they're moving ahead very rapidly. So what you're saying is that we're seeing a potential shift in global chip manufacturing power dynamics. We are. The only thing that's limiting that, that shift are the, uh, the barriers to moving technology between China and the West, largely sponsored by the U.S. But as the U.S.'s influence has waned, China's has increased, and those, those blockades aren't going to last much longer. It's interesting, isn't it? You talk about those blockades. You know, NVIDIA's boss saying that those U.S. curbs on chip exports that were meant to hurt China are actually going to hurt the U.S. more. What's your take? I agree. Uh, that what this has done is, is driven the Chinese government to fix their lack of competitiveness in, this, in these technologies. Rather than buying from the U.S., they're building their own with massive financial backing. And they've closed gaps that people thought were unclosable in a matter of months. So it, it's, it's frightening how quick they're going. And it's also frightening how little concern the West seems to have at the moment. Okay, so the U.S. and China seem to be owning this space. But what about Europe and other burgeoning tech hubs, like maybe India? Have they all left it too late to get in the game? Possibly. Uh, the, the, the sheer momentum that China is showing makes it very difficult without similar levels of government funding for anybody else to catch up. And Western governments just haven't been all that interested in funding development efforts like this. So right now, it's China's government is actually driving a level of development and advancement that the other countries appear to be unwilling to match, and that's problematic. Rob Enderley, it's been great getting your insights. That's Rob Enderley, President and Principal Analyst at Enderley Group.